Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in the United Kingdom and today we're going to be discussing case number 45 from our Facebook page. Uh, towards the end of this video, uh, there will be a new activity that I will uh, that I haven't tried before, but let's just try it this time and see what you think. So bear with me till the end and we're going to find out there. So the case we're going to talk about today is case number 45. So it is about a 75 year old gentleman who presented to ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain for about five hours duration. His vital signs were all okay. And this was his pre-hospital ECG. So as I always say, this is the time to pause the video, have a look at this ECG uh, I'd say be meticulous with the details and, um, and see what you think. There are two questions that I want you to think about. I want you to tell me if you would consider this ECG a STEMI ECG. And um, do you think this patient would qualify for primary PCI activation in your local hospital or not? Okay, let's move on and talk about this ECG. Let's start with making things bigger. So looking at this ECG, so there are actually uh, two areas that I want you to focus on. It is AVL and AVF. So two interesting findings that we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about some pre-STEMI signs. And starting with AVL changes in the right coronary occlusion. This is something that's been discussed in so many case reports and in um, so many articles and studies. So I'm just giving you some examples here. Um, so those are some of the articles that talked about this. And basically what we need to talk about is reciprocal changes can precede ST elevation in the ECG. This was an interesting finding for me when I knew about this a few years ago. And um, I don't know why, but it was kind of embedded in my head that um, the ST elevation happens in the same time uh, with the ST depression, with the reciprocal change. But actually, this is wrong. Reciprocal change can precede the ST elevation. The ST depression AVL can be the first sign of an inferior wall STEMI. And uh, this finding is so sensitive that some authors said that in absence of reciprocal change in lead AVL, you should question your diagnosis of an inferior wall STEMI. So here is an interesting article that talked about the ST depression in AVL as a sensitive marker for acute inferior wall STEMI. And in this article, in this study, they said that actually 0.5 millimetre ST depression in AVL, that was 97% sensitive for identifying inferior wall STEMI. So really very sensitive. They also said that in 7.5% of patients with inferior wall STEMI, this was initially the only abnormality. So the ECG was absolutely fine, except changes with AVL. Another study that was published in 2016, talking about the ST depression in lead AVL as a way of dif differentiating inferior wall STEMI from acute pericarditis. And here is the conclusion of this study. So they said when there is an inferior ST elevation, uh, the presence of any ST depression in lead AVL is highly sensitive for chronic occlusion in the inferior wall STEMI and very specific in terms of differentiating the inferior wall STEMI from acute pericarditis. So let's have a look at this example. So this, this was one of my patients that I've seen um, recently. And uh, looking at this ECG, he presented with a cardiac sounding chest pain. Looking at the inferior wall, it's not really one millimeter ST elevation in the inferior leads, but looking at AVL, this is really concerning. There is an ST depression with T wave inversion in uh, AVL in here. And actually, if you look carefully at the ST depression, you will notice that it is down sloping kind of a straight followed by the T wave inversion. When you see this pattern, this is really um, concerning for inferior wall STEMI. So this patient came to me in ED. There was no pre-hospital activation of the primary PCI 
and here is the repeat ECG in ED on arrival. So clearly a banged or ST elevation in lead two, lead three, lead AVF. So a classic inferior wall STEMI straight to the cath lab from the ED rhesus. Moving on to this case, this is a case that we've discussed before uh, for a patient who presented with a cardiac sounding chest pain. And uh, looking at this ECG, there is actually no ST elevation anywhere in this ECG. First clue was this change in AVL. And as we said, looking carefully here, you will notice that there is a downsloping straight ST segment followed by a T wave inversion. This is really concerning in presence of chest pain and a sign of a, an impending right coronary occlusion. Second clue in this ECG was the triad in V2 and in V3 of tall R wave, ST depression, upright T wave. When you see this, you should think about the possibility of posterior wall STEMI. So that is the repeat ECG for this patient with some uh, posterior leads. So V7, V8, V9. And again, if we make these bigger, there is an ST elevation here and there. So this was a case of posterior wall STEMI. The troponin for this case was this number. Um, the cutoff for this troponin was 40, but to be fair, any, uh, any test that will test like this in the results, no matter what the reference is, this is going to be high. So this was about the first sign that I wanted to talk about in uh, our ECG. And now we're going to move on to the other sign that we can use to predict for STEMI, which is the hyperacute T wave. In terms of hyperacute T wave, it is basically a broad, big, asymmetrically peaked T wave. So tall and big and broad and asymmetrical. For some reason, it was embedded in our head, the delusion of hyperacute T wave equals hyperkalemia. And this is not right. Actually, yeah, it can be uh, in hyperkalemia by also one of the early signs of STEMI. So as a general rule, if you can easily fit the whole complex under the T wave, this is really concerning. This is a hyperacute T wave. You should start thinking ischemia. So these are some examples for what I mean by hyperacute T wave. So you can fit the whole complex under the T wave here. This is concerning. You can fit the whole complex under the T wave. You can fit the whole complex under the T wave. You can easily fit the whole complex under the T wave. You can easily fit the whole complex under the T wave. And that is another example of this. So when you see any of these kind of hyperacute T waves, be scared. So let's go back to our case and uh, find out what happened. So this was a patient who phoned for an ambulance because of a cardiac sounding chest pain. The ambulance crew did an ECG and they found this ECG. Uh, they were really concerned about this patient for two reasons. First, you can clearly see that we've got a concerning straight down sloping ST depression in AVL followed by T wave inversion. So we've just said that this uh, could be an early sign of an inferior wall STEMI. There is also a hyperacute T wave in AVF. I can easily fit the whole complex under the T in AVF. There is a slight ST elevation in lead uh, three, maybe in lead uh, AVF, um, but I don't really think it is one millimeter in, in AVF. So based upon these findings, the ambulance crew phoned the cath lab trying to refer directly to them and to activate it. Um, but the cath lab team response was uh, no, uh, this ECG does not fulfill the criteria to activate the cath lab and diverted the patient to uh, ED. So when this patient presented to ED, a repeat ECG was done. And uh, here we go. So now we've got a banged or inferior wall STEMI. So there were plenty of learning points from this case. Um, I would say the important ones are we need to know that reciprocal changes in AVL can precede the ST elevation in the inferior leads. And if you can fit the whole complex under the T wave, be scared. And lastly, when in doubt, just get serial ECGs, back to back ECGs. Uh, it's not going to harm anyone and it will give you the answer at the end. And uh, this was it about our case for this week. So thank you very much for uh, 
listening. And uh, now we're going to try a new thing here. So I'd like you to have a look at this picture and tell me in the comments, where do you think uh, this place is? And um, let's see if you're going to be able to figure it out or not. In terms of all the papers that we've talked about uh, in this talk, so I will put links for them in the show notes for this video. Thank you so much. Stay safe and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.